Hi, it's Katrina. From underground churches to top secret World War II bunkers, here are eight amazing underground structures. Number eight, post office in a cave. This post office located in the Postojna cave in Slovenia has become famous. In 2017, Architectural Digest named this underground place as one of the seven subterranean wonders of the world. The post office was built in 1899, making it the oldest underground post office in the world. It was constructed entirely with materials that were small enough to be transported to the building's location by the cave's train. Until 1911, the post office was only open on special occasions, and during that time, it became famous for the thousands of postcards people sent from it. In just three hours on Whit Monday in 1909, 12,000 visitors stopped by and sent 37,000 postcards. Even after the post office established regular business hours, it remained a hot spot for sending postcards, with somewhere between 6,000 and 11,000 of them being sold daily during the 1911 summer season. Today's visitors can still purchase postcards, along with special edition stamps and other memorabilia featuring pictures of the cave. In the nearby concert hall, which is also located within the Postojna cave, there is an exhibit dedicated to the 112-year-old post office. Number 7. Antorini Wine Cellar Marchesa Antorini is one of Italy's most famous winemakers. The family-owned business has been making wine since 1385, but until 2013, they kept their doors closed to the public. That year, the company opened their newly built Marchesa Antorini Chianti Classico cellar to visitors for the first time. The cellar is located in Bargino, Italy, and is almost entirely built into a hill surrounded by olive groves, vineyards, and oak trees. Its entrance is camouflaged by vines, and the only part of the building that can be seen from the outside is the terrace of the restaurant inside. Visitors get a chance to learn about the Antorini family's 625-year history of expert winemaking, experience the winemaking process firsthand, sample their entire wine portfolio, and enjoy the family's centuries-old art collection that is on display. Number 6. Vilitska Salt Mine this 13th-century salt mine is located in the Krakow metropolitan area of southern Poland and continuously provided table salt until 2007. Mining activities ended in 1996 due to the falling cost of table salt. Until then, the Wilitska salt mine was operated by Krakow Salt Works. It's the oldest European salt mine and is considered to have royal status. The mine is an official Polish historic monument and a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site. It now functions mostly as a museum, and to access the chandelier-laden cave, one must descend an 800-step staircase. Luckily, once the tour is over and you've done your sightseeing, visitors don't have to walk up the staircase and can exit using an elevator. Visitors can access labyrinths and mine shafts, rock salt statues carved by miners, historic exhibits of salt mining technology, and an underground lake. There are also four chapels carved out of rock salt and a collection of statues by contemporary artists. Some people even get married in the reception room that can be reserved for private functions. And now for number five. But first, be sure to subscribe if you're new here. We'd love to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Number five, Underground Church. In the desert mining town of Kuber Pedi, Australia, there is an underground Serbian Orthodox Church known as the Kuber Pedi Serbian Church, appropriate, that was built in 1993. It was constructed by Serbs who settled in Kuber Pedi as opal miners. The church is 98 feet long, 17 feet wide, and 23 feet high, and at its deepest point is 55 feet below the ground. The entire structure is carved into sandstone. In addition to being a church, the subterranean complex contains a religious school, a parish house, and a community hall. The ceiling window and iconostasis are made of stained glass, and the church features unique frescoes that are carved into the stone, as well as intricately carved statues of saints. Why is the church underground? Well, in a desert where temperatures reach well above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, one of the few ways to seek relief is to go underground, and people wanted to be comfortable while they worshipped. Understandable. In recent years, as the region's mining profits have dwindled, the church has suffered from financial struggle. Hopes of the church being paid for by a massive opal find have been all but lost. Luckily, tourism keeps the church open and maintained. Number 4. Stunning Swiss Mountainside Retreat 
In Val, Switzerland, it's considered of utmost importance not to disturb the tranquility of the local atmosphere with the construction of a new dwelling. Most architectural proposals in Vals are rejected because they're thought to be disruptive to the village's environment. The architects of Sea Arch and Christian Mueller took great care to ensure that this home, which is very close to the famed Val's thermal baths, had an appropriately subdued presence. The thoughtfully planned home was built underground and into a mountain, and is far more luxurious than a typical bunker. It's completely modern and is also spacious, featuring an entertainment area, a dining room, a full kitchen, and even a guest bedroom. By being built into a mountain, the home is also somewhat energy efficient and requires barely any heating or cooling during the winter and summer months. Perhaps the most amazing aspect of this home is how diligently its designers and builders stuck to the demand for discretion. From the outside, it's barely noticeable, and you might even miss its elliptical upscale entrance while walking past it. Number three, The Hobbit Motel. The Lord of the Rings is one of the most beloved series of all time. Fans wanting to create their own Hobbit experience built the very first Hobbit Motel, located in Woodland Park on New Zealand's North Island. It's built into a hill and has round doors and windows and a grassy roof. Although the motel was designed to resemble a true Hobbit home, it was built for humans, and each unit is big and tall enough to comfortably accommodate up to six guests. Also, unlike a Hobbit home, the units have modern conveniences like plumbing and electricity. The Hobbit Motel was designed with comfort in mind, but is also an ideal place for the Earth-conscious traveler. In fact, all 10 of Woodland Park's hotels were built partially from recycled and natural materials, offering a unique, cozy, and environmentally friendly experience. Number 2. Park Pobedi at nearly 276 feet beneath ground level, the Park Pobedi metro station is the deepest station in Moscow and the third deepest in the world. At the end of 2016, Deputy Mayor for Urban Development and Construction Marat Kuznulin announced the launching of the world's longest escalator within the Park Pobedi station. The escalator is nearly 427 feet long and operates at a depth of 223 feet. But the escalator at Park Pobedi is far from the most exciting thing about the station. Russia is known for its beautiful decorated subway stations, and Park Poeti is no exception. Another metro station known for both its depth and beauty is, believe it or not, located in Pyongyang, North Korea. Puhong Station was one of only two metro stations in the Hermit Kingdom that permitted the entry of tourists until 2010, when the rules were relaxed a bit. As one descends into the station, they can expect to be greeted by revolutionary anthems playing over antique loudspeakers. Once someone reaches the bottom of the escalator, they'll be greeted by an array of ultra-nationalistic artwork adorning the station's walls. Pyongyang's metro is one of the deepest in the world, with tracks sitting as low as 360 feet below ground, and the journey into Pulhong Station can take up to four minutes. The system stations double as bomb shelters because of their depth, and remain a comfortable 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit year-round. Number 1. Churchill's Secret Bunker it was once customary for world leaders to flee from major cities in the event of warfare, but Winston Churchill bravely, although secretly, remained quietly stationed beneath the streets of London during World War II. In a set of dank subterranean rooms that were once used by civil servants to store furniture, Churchill and his most senior commanders plotted the British military's next move and communicated with allied countries. These rooms were called the War Rooms and were equipped with the latest technology. For six years, the War Rooms were the nerve center of the British British war effort. From here, Churchill made numerous radio broadcasts, including three key war speeches, encouraging the nation not to let the war break their spirits. He also planned attacks with the high-ranking military personnel and government officials who also occupied the bunker. Certain aspects of the war rooms were kept secret even from the staff. For example, while Churchill engaged in telephone conversations with U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt prior to D-Day, the staff was under the impression that he was using the bathroom. Hundreds of people staffed the war rooms, and according to the historical narrative, they approached the war effort with a gung-ho attitude despite the decrepit living conditions of their underground home. Churchill directed the war from the bunker's cabinet room, which has some of history's most tense moments frozen in time. On the left arm of the chair Churchill sat in, there are scratch marks from his fingernails clawing at the wood. On the right arm, there are indentations from the ring he was wearing, caused by him slamming his hand down in anger. Despite his willingness to utilize the underground lair, Churchill wasn't exactly happy about doing so. He had a reputation for carelessly flicking cigar butts onto the floor, and was not pleased about the lack of modern plumbing, which forced him to use a bedpan. 
The telephones of the map room were manned 24-7, and the room featured a giant map that was used for plotting British convoys all around the world. These are just some of the features of the war rooms, which facilitated Britain's wartime activities at the highest levels of government, and are now open to the public. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe and come over and say hi on my new Instagram at Katrina Explained. See you next time! Bye!